This is an Air Force report. I'm senior airman Alina Richard. Superstorm Sandy ripped through the East Coast this week, leaving millions without power, flooding coastal communities, including parts of New York City, and taking at least 48 lives. of October 2012, Hurricane Sandy slammed into the northeast United States, affecting people in as many as 17 states. After the storm passed, over 100 people were dead. Thousands of homes were either flooded or otherwise destroyed. 8.1 million homes were without power, and $25 billion of economic activity had been lost. At the 105th Airlift Wing, we activated the Insulation Control Center on Friday the 26th of October evacuated our C-17 aircraft and deployed our volunteers in anticipation of future state and federal taskings. After the storm hit, it quickly became apparent that the major New York and New Jersey metropolitan airports were out of commission, and the Stewart Air National Guard base, located only 60 miles north of the most heavily devastated areas, was in a perfect position to assume aerial port of debarkation activities. On the 31st of October, I received a call from Air Mobility Command asking if we at the 105th were capable and willing of assuming APOD activities? The quick and easy answer was yes, pending approval from our state leadership and the National Guard Bureau. With those approvals quickly in hand, we were only hours away from receiving our first Air Mobility Command aircraft in support of Hurricane Sandy relief operations. That quick yes answer was an easier answer than you might think. My confidence was firmly rooted in the knowledge that we had 25 plus years of operational experience in the strategic airlift community and that our aerial port had recently returned from the CENTCOM theater with two major awards in hand. The first was the Dedalian Major General Carter Logistics Effectiveness Award, and the second was the CENTCOM Meritorious Unit Award for meritorious conduct during deployed activities, conduct that was so exemplary that the visiting Vice Chief of Staff of the Air Force remarked, I've been all over the AOR, and this is the best aerial port that I've ever seen. Having the opportunity to leverage the skills that were honed during a combat environment and employ those skills in a defense support to civil authorities contingency was a great opportunity to not only return shareholder value, but also make a huge contribution in easing the pain and suffering of our fellow citizens. Major Gator, I was a 651st Expeditionary Logistics Readiness Squadron Commander at Camp Bastion in RC Southwest in Afghanistan. When we arrived at Camp Bastion, we discovered that there were many challenges facing us. Shortly after our arrival, we were designated a strategic hub. This required our manpower to increase from 47 to 151 in a very short period of time, and also mandated that we make some creative and innovative changes to accommodate the increased cargo and passenger capacity that were coming through our facility, redirecting the cargo yard and increasing the space, as well as using alternate facilities to process the passengers in and out of the area. I was very impressed with the area porters from the 105th. They did a phenomenal job in very difficult and uh, dangerous circumstances. Joint Base Leatherneck in UK Camp Bastion is a joint base housing United States Air Force, Marine Corps, and British Army personnel. Interconnection and communication between these services wasn't what it should have been. Current operating instructions were expanded upon to ensure seamless force integration and cohesion. This included appointing an Air National Guard chief to right the ship, ensuring that camp personnel were adhering to the Department of Defense Defense Transportation Regulation 4500. Camp Bastion, we had uh, several challenges. The cargo yard uh, was too small, unorganized, and had to be relocated. We uh, set up a grid location where we could account for the cargo, both inbound and outbound, uh, more timely manner, and streamlined the process to make it more effective. Handling of cargo on base was one issue that needed improvement. The cargo yard in place was neither suitable for use nor adequately organized. In addition, Transportation Priority 2 cargo was not being entered into the Global Air Transportation Execution System properly. 
Through careful planning, the cargo yard was repurposed by utilizing existing customer space to secure cargo and by creating a more organized and efficient layout. Not only was the physical setup changed, but the way cargo was inspected was revamped and streamlined for efficiency. A team of inspectors was flown in to inspect backed up cargo in other secure locations and checked into gates. Meanwhile, joint inspectors on base handled current incoming and outgoing cargo. This allowed for the elimination of the existing backlog, and inspection teams were sent out to the different forward operating bases to inspect their cargo. Our teams provided five areas of responsibility forward operating bases with superior integrated logistical support. Not only did this enable flexibility for just-in-time missions, but this new process led to a 45% decrease in cargo hold time. Through better use of radio frequency identification tags and the installation of new antennas, a 95% in-transit visibility was achieved and maintained. To repair the disconnect with the movement control team run by DynCorp, a representative was assigned to make sure incoming cargo was cataloged and organized based on where it needed to go, thus ensuring vital mission cargo was delivered to the right places. So one of the other challenges we had at Camp Bastion was our material handling equipment. We had uh, sufficient equipment, but not sufficiently trained drivers. So we were able to set up a training program back at home station, brought them back, and they were able to help us exceed our uh, MOG or maximum on ground capabilities and provided us with additional uh, training drivers. The lack of fully qualified material handling equipment and civilian operators was a serious setback, especially in regards to the 60K pallet mover. Equipment could not be fully utilized, which meant important supplies were not being distributed at an acceptable pace. The solution to this problem was to fly these contractors out to Stewart Air National Guard Base, where they could receive the necessary two-week training course to operate these machines and become fully qualified and proficient. Now these operators could support mission requirements, increase the work pace, and max operations on the ground. The, the joint inspection process was uh, duplicated efforts when we got there. We were able to, uh, to coordinate with the customs department, have them relocate on site. It allowed us to do one inspection instead of two, check the cargo for airworthiness at the same time as having it inspected for uh, contraband and, and the like. The units were able to rotate back home uh, more efficiently and in a, in a much quicker time frame. Making sure equipment and material get to the right people is vital for mission success. This was not being accomplished in a timely manner due to an inefficient standard operating procedure. The first time-saving solution was to bring in an on-site customs inspector. Next, joint inspectors were assigned to accompany customs agents to avoid having to schedule dual inspections. All of these efforts allowed for a decrease inspection time by 50%. What we did is uh we put into place a process where you would weigh J.I., arrange for customs to come and seal the baggage pallets 12 hours prior, thus eliminating any bottlenecks when it was time to try and move all these passengers in their baggage. And usually on each C-17, we would put five baggage pallets. So for our 60K, it was able for them to have the baggage pallets loaded and be ready to go when the mission arrived. In addition, an Air Force Assistant Contracting Officer representative was also appointed to the passenger terminal as a quality measure to ensure baggage pallets were properly inspected and built correctly. The COR was also responsible for making sure passenger manifests were done correctly and flight eligibility was verified. By doing this, any passenger delays were effectively eliminated. The changes to load planning and MHE facilitated the movement of 107 million pounds of cargo and 60,831 passengers in six months. Before leaving Camp Bastion, these procedures were shared with civilian, military, and government representatives for future continuity and effectiveness.
Airmen from the 105th Airlift Wing in New York who deployed to Camp Bastion, Afghanistan in 2011 were faced with several great challenges. They understood what they were up against and embraced that challenge with not only the determination to survive, but with the commitment to transform a fledgling air cargo terminal through their collective talent and experience into the shining example of effectiveness and efficiency that was so critical to the CENTCOM mission. What the deployed airmen of the 105th didn't know upon returning from Camp Bastion is how important those same process improvements would be to millions of Americans. The tremendous accomplishments in Afghanistan and the knowledge gained through that experience proved to be critical in the 105th Airlift Wing's ability to accept yet another challenge for our nation. Upon returning from deployment, this high-performing team of logisticians would be asked to answer the call again, along with hundreds of other members from the 105th, when it became known that the most severe storm in over 200 years would strike at the heart of the largest metropolitan area in America, 70 miles south of Stewart Air National Guard Base. When the nation called, the Air and Ground Operations Response Team at Stewart was able to confidently accept the challenge again. The team's ability to implement the process improvements and apply the lessons learned to home station operations effectively transformed a guard unit with nine assigned aircraft into the critical lifeline for millions of affected citizens in need of humanitarian assistance, medical care, and electricity. During this time of great need, the 105th increased home station ops tempo by 600% within a 60-hour time period. This included recovering and launching 36 heavy cargo aircraft, carrying over 800,000 pounds of cargo needed to provide aid to those affected by the storm. Multiple types of aircraft were flown in at a rigorous pace, including C-5s, C-17s, C-27s, and C-130s from bases as far as Arizona and California. The 105th Aerial Port unloaded 98 large utility vehicles from these aircrafts, as well as 800 civilian and military responders. These vehicles were fueled and then sent to the parts of Lower New York that were in desperate need of power. The 105th could not yet rest. There was still much to do for the people of New York City. Members were sent down to Manhattan where they worked closely with civilian emergency service providers to distribute more than 378,000 pounds of food, water, and aid to victims of the hurricane some of which was expedited by the APOD mission. While in the heart of the disaster area, 105th Airmen were a critical aid when more than 720 patients needed to be evacuated from Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan and relocated to a safer place. For those patients that needed immediate medical attention and could not be moved, members devised ways to reroute backup power for medical subsystems. This proved invaluable as power was provided for six hours while doctors completed open heart surgery, saving a patient's life. So when Hurricane Sandy hit, uh, basically, I believe it was late, uh, late Monday into Tuesday, and we lost power for our service, the cardiac surgery service, we had a, a critically ill patient in the hospital. The problem was that uh, with his chest being open for five days, uh, we really needed to actually operate on the guy uh, you know, during this time frame. And basically, what we needed was an operating room that would run like any other day. Uh, and you know, to get power to it, water to it, uh, have the ability to use sterile instruments, etc. Uh, and somehow, uh, between I think probably Wednesday and Thursday, they were able to put that together, uh, such that Friday morning we came and, and basically saw uh, an operating room that looked like it would any other day. Uh, and you know, the end result uh, of that is is that he was ultimately able to have his mechanical support weaned, his chest closed. He left the hospital uh, alive today, uh, and in large part because of uh, the support that we got from, from your guys. The Chief of Staff Team Excellence Award is about enhancing mission capability and improving operational performance. The aerial board performance at Camp Bastion in the CENTCOM theater and back home after Hurricane Sandy validates our premise that Team 105th is in fact a team of pound professionals.